I don't know if you guys noticed in the last video or not, but I'm no longer packing the Nissan. I got my car back. It looks great. Drives great. It's great. Anyways, Caitlin's in there. We're loading up right now, getting ready to head to Florida. It's midnight, and I'm about to pick up my buddy Daniel at his apartment, and then we're going to shoot down to Florida for the weekend. Uh, mostly targeting sirens, and uh, if we see some snakes or other animals, that'll be awesome, but I will keep you guys posted on how this goes. First find of the day, a bear. There's a corn snake right there too, nice. All right, guys, we are in the habitat of the reticulated siren. We're gonna do some dip netting. But first start of the day, a little green and all. He's very cold. This water is cold. <laughs> all right, guys, Jake just dip netted a little Eurasia larvae and a couple tadpoles. First herps we've gotten in the water. No sirens yet, uh, but I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys, well, we've been dip netting in this pond for a while now and uh, haven't had any luck. We're starting to think that it might just not be very conducive to dip netting here. And I think we're going to come back and try to shine this area tonight and see if we can get any. But we're going to keep working it for a little bit longer and hopefully we'll see something. Clump them back. All right, guys, I was digging around the seepage and I noticed this tail hanging out right there. It's one of the first things we've really seen. But if you look back up in there, you can see a couple of little white spots. Those are actually eggs. This is a two-line salamander with her clutch of eggs. And this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this, so that's really cool. Um, not anything that we were looking for in particular, but definitely nice to see. We're going to cover this girl back up, uh, try to put this back as best that we found it, and keep looking. All right, guys, so we did a little bit more dip netting and came to a little seepy area right where we found that two-line salamander, and after a couple of dips right in the mud there, we turned up two of the undescribed dwarf quote-unquote siren that's not actually a dwarf siren these guys are uh members of the siren genus rather than pseudobranchus which the true dwarf sirens are but these guys are super small like this one right here is an adult he's probably only what he's like four or five inches long he's a full-grown adult yeah that says about four or five inches and then that guy right there is a juvenile so we're gonna put these guys in a little cleaner uh environment for you to get a better look at and let them go but I just wanted to do a quick intro to them because they're pretty interesting and definitely one of the things we're hoping to see down here. All right, guys, here's another look at these guys. Oh, <laughs> earthquake. Here's another look at these guys in clear water. That's 10 million trucks drive right by. Just go to town, go for it, guys. Let's see what happens. Oh, sweet. See if I can't blow them out. Perfect. <laughs> Just how I wanted it. <laughs> Alright guys, the next species we're hoping to see is the recently described dwarf salamander. It is a uh, Specialist of sphagnum moss beds like this one right here. So we're gonna be looking around stuff like this I'm gonna hold on to Wait, put a stick in there. Put a stick in. <laughs> is that water right there warm? Let's see. Yeah. That's crazy looking. That is it's actually not cold. That cold. Dude, that's definitely like gonna sink Yo, I'm you definitely in. not diving in there. Here, no, hold on, on that roll, tree. Yeah, hold on that tree. We have some rope that'd be great to go into. I mean, for you. Oh. I don't know, it goes deep. All right, guys, not what we were hoping to see in this habitat, but still cool to see. This is a southern red salamander, uh, Pseudotriton ruber, and the relative of the mud salamander, which we were kind of hoping to turn up. We think we turned up larval mud, and I gave me a little bit of a heart attack when I flipped this guy, but not what we're looking for, so I'm just going to put him back after a couple quick photos. All right, guys, Jake just found our first snake of the day. Pretty little ring neck. That was a good-looking one. Live one. Live one? <laughs> Live snake. Live oh. One. Oh, yeah, I forgot we found a dead cotton mouse. So Whoa! Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Anyways, little ring neck. We're just going to let this guy go and keep looking for salamanders. All right, guys, we found this area where there's a bunch of fur and stuff where a hawk had been sitting on this log devouring a squirrel. And uh, underneath the log, 
our second red salamander of the day. Uh, help me. <laughs> oh, I'm sunk. I hath sunken. Uh, this is the habitat of the recently described sphagnum. Are you doing okay? Sphagnum dwarf salamander. And it's muddy. All right, guys, we finally turned up what we we're looking for. Daniel managed to scoop this little dwarf salamander out of the sphagnum. What is the common name on these guys? Is it sphagnum dwarf salamander? Yeah. It actually is sphagnum dwarf salamander? Uh, you know what? I think it's something like that, I think. Yeah. I'll look it up and put it in, put it below. But anyways, this little guy is actually a fully grown adult male. You can see he has Siri, like the, uh, the two-line salamanders during breeding season and a lot of other Eurycia too. But pretty nondescript, a little more colorful than the other dwarf salamanders. Nice reddish coloration on his back, but we got our target. We're gonna put this guy back in his sphagnum wad and uh, keep on going. All right, guys, next salamander of the day, we're back dipping again, digging through some muck. And uh, this is another siren minima. You can see that little paddle tail right there. It's characteristic of this species. Anyways, just gonna put this guy back in the water since we've seen a couple today, but pretty cool. All right, guys, it's starting to get dark. We're about to hit the water and see if we can night shine a reticulated siren. All right, guys, first find of the night is this little mud turtle. Uh, not sure if this is an eastern or a Florida, but it shined this guy foraging on the base of the pond. Good morning, everyone. Our search for the reticulated siren last night did not go as planned, and uh, we found basically nothing. We found the mud turtle. And uh, we're up this morning pretty early, driving back north from the coast to an area that we're gonna be looking for our next target species, the one-toed amphiuma. Um, there's also a, a whole slew of other cool animals there like mud salamanders that we're hoping to see. There's a pelican. If my phone would focus on him. <laughs> Anyways, I will keep you guys posted and let you know when we get where we're going. Okay, maybe okay. I'll just hit this <laughs> pelican real quick. <laughs> All right, guys. We are out in the habitat of the one-toed Amphiuma, and uh, that's a heck of a cypress tree right there. We're looking for mud and logs and stuff to dig through, so I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys, Jake struck with the first salamander of the day, a nice little three line. We see these guys a lot up in Georgia. What did you just know? I'm gonna record it while you flip it. Oh, three line salamander and a worm. Oh, you don't say. That should have had something else though. These guys are Apalachicola dusky salamanders. We get them up in the upper flint drainage too, but pretty cool to see them in Florida. This might be the best log I've seen all day. And nothing. Next salamander of the day, another little Southern two line salamander. Cool how different these guys look with this reddish coloration, but we've seen a lot so far this trip. All right, guys, first snake of the day. Jake kicked up this little water snake. Uh, pretty, pretty dull on top. Actually, pretty dull on the bottom, too. Anyways, first snake of the day. Hopefully, it won't be the last, but we're going to let him go and keep looking. <laughs> Just shake off and put it to the register. We got dirty and didn't find any amphiumus. There's a turtle. <laughs> There is a turtle, very possibly a barber's map turtle, basking on that log about 300,000 feet away. Well, this is probably our last find of the trip. Uh, it's been pretty slow so far, but we just turned up <laughs> a two-toed amphiuma. This is not the one-toed amphiuma we were looking for, but still a ridiculous and kind of crazy creature to see nonetheless. These guys have, okay, don't bite me. These can actually bite you which is really weird to say about a salamander, and they will bite you. But fully aquatic, you can see that derpy, okay, he's going. Let me see that hand. Let me see that derpy little hand right there. They've completely lost all their limbs for the most part, except for those two little nubs on the front and little nubs on the back too. Yeah, two little toes. These guys are super slippery, so actually catching them without a net is almost impossible sometimes, but I actually flipped this guy under a rock right on the water's edge.
Look at his little eyeballs. Oh, I got a, a slime on my oh. phone. 